And today is, um, what's the date? It's, um, Wednesday, September 21st. It's Wednesday, September 21st, 2022, at, uh, 1.53 a.m. Yeah, so, um, that car just... That's one of those big ass O'Reilly skanks. Dang, y'all were barely able to see it, but I saw she had funny, t funny tail lights on the Florida skate. So, um, the first car walked up to, um, the, I mean, I mean the O'Reilly skank with the Ford Escape walked up to that first car and talked to them and then left. But the guy in that silver, um, Buick car with the, with the white paint thrown on the side. I mean, I'm glad he left me alone and Dawn wasn't with him today. So, um, tonight is a bad night because I've been, I guess, attacked by mosquitoes really bad. And, um, I'm glad I have the rubbing alcohol with me because it help is helping to soothe um the bites on the mosquitoes. I mean, it's helping to soothe the mosquito bites. And the mosquito bites, they have like an, they cause me like an insatiable itch. That scratching it alone is not going to take the itch away, but the alcohol is really helping. Um. But it's like the type of mosquitoes that bite you and then you swell like crazy and itch. Like it's like an unforgivable kind of itch that it will just will not stop. And then if I spray the alcohol on it, that's when they the swelling it goes down and it itch stops, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's like these people do their gang stalking activities and then play innocent, like as if you're the one who's harassing them for no reason when they're covertly harassing you. You know, you drive by me with one headlight, I put you on film, and then you get an attitude and be like, is there a problem? Or, oh, I'm going to call the police because obviously you have mental... You, 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 they treat me like I'm the demon-possessed zombie. I mean, they treat me like I'm the demon-possessed crazy zombie. But I, I mean, it's like... How the hell I show proof, tangible proof? It can be a short video of me showing tangible proof of my of a targeting experience, and the fact that the so-called TI community all backstabbed and betrayed me, and so I have basically I'm left with nothing but perps to be stalking and watching my channel, with the exception of like ten supporters. And um, and they're not there all the time to be supportive of my videos, but the obsessed stalker haters, they're there to give me nothing but thumbs down. So it's like, if other ta professed targeted individuals show a video of um with themselves, I mean they don't even have to show their face in a their own face in the picture. 
but but my face being in a pit in a in a video of like me turning the camera towards my myself or my face being like that video with the um it was like a week or two ago in a in a video of um excuse me no I'm sorry it was the beginning of the September um that video of that perp following me closely with one headlight following me aggressively and so I had all that that's like blatant evidence right there and I mean all that I mean that blatant evidence in that short video people want to thumb give it thumbs down because oh candy's their candy being negative or full of drama, or, oh, she's off her meds, and stuff like that, you know. But other professed targeted individuals, they got each other's back, and be like, oh, that's the best footage I've seen, the best footage I've ever seen. But they want to grade me, like, narcissistic perps want to grade me on how positive or negative the topic is. But if I do something, that's my favorite thing to do, like go to the beach, I still get like massive thumbs down. Or I try to show positive stuff and they might still give me thumbs down. Trying to, you know, it's like I can't win for nothing, but it's making me more depressed to have to show evidence and other professed targeted individuals, they refuse to see it. They, I mean, they refuse to believe it dis- despite the evidence in their face. And it's like, you're going through the same thing as me. How could you not believe me? How could you call it fake? And all they can do is call me a perp. I mean, if they said like, oh no, because I had I I did a video. You're perping me because I did a video with with somebody following me with one hair like, and I'm like, well, then I go look on their on their YouTube channel and be like, well, I don't see any videos on YouTube or Twitter about you know you being physically followed closely. By one headlighter. And sometimes those same people who fought, they be like, uh-uh, because you a perp. And and I'm the one who did a video earlier that day. And then you post it later on. That's how I know you're perping me. But then you go look, I'll go look on their channel. And all they do is just sit behind a desk and, and slander T.I.'s all day. And they, and they pretend. They pretend that it's like they pretend to be targeted when they're not targeted, and all they do is sit behind a desk and um sit behind a desk all day and um and just slander real TIs all day and then ignorantly laugh and think it's funny, you know. And then they defend and agree with the the online perps that I have to deal with. So, uh, I mean, I've dealt with fake TI perps and regular perps calling me, you know, not chosen, not part of 144,000. Trying to make it like as if I'm a counterfeit chosen one. You know, I'm very targeted, but I never said I was chosen. Y'all the ones when you pretend to walk up to me, I mean, well, not physically, but, you know, come to me online and, and love bomb, you narcissistically love bomb all my videos telling me you're chosen, you're chosen, I really believe you're chosen, you're my favorite, like, oh, I don't even know you, and this is my first video, but you're my favorite, and I believe you God's chosen, 
and oh, you have a whole bunch of light in your eyes and this, that, whatever. But then, oh, let's connect. Let's get to know each other. Let's exchange phone numbers. I get on the phone with y'all. Then y'all act like as if y'all want to try to police or control how I deal with my targeting, how I should deal with my targeting. And if I, you know, try to talk to y'all about my traumas and abuses and stuff, then um, it seems like y'all use that to try to gather intel. on You're supposed to be targeting like me, so I thought. And then you're secretly gathering intel on me. And you tricked me into thinking that you can be the lifesaver to solve all my, like, give me, like, some closure or solve all my solve all my past childhood traumas and you know pretend to be the fake savior or something or and st- or something like that and try to pretend to give me fake closure on my targeting or or how my targeting began and you try to make the so-called friendship sound like it's too good to be true and then you know once I emotionally start to get comfortable and confident that, that, oh man, this is like, then I start to return the favor and start to feel, feel like, you know, oh, well, you're my favorite too, you know, or I never had a friend like you, or you like a sister or a brother to me. Then once they sense that I'm comfortable, that's when they start to suddenly pull away the rug, emotional rug, slowly and subtly pull away the um, rug of emotional support and then start manipulating the friendship. I mean, I've I've had over 10 people who've done that to me. And then, you know, they use everything... They they try to get you to feel comfortable with telling them your whole life story. Come on, man. They, they try to get you comfortable with telling them your whole life story. And a lot of times, they just want to know about you. And they don't tell you shit about what they're going through. And they want to keep tabs on you. And trying to make it like that. Oh, I'm just checking on you, you know. You know. And so, um, you know, and this could be with fake TI perps and regular perps and online or in person, you know, who try to establish or form a so-called friendship with you. Or they'll do something like ex- take your phone number down and then next thing you know, they ghost you or go AWOL on you and you never see or hear from them again. And it's just doggone weird. But the fake T.I. perp aspect of it is like when they start manipulating and switching up on you and, and stuff like that, or they laugh in your face during a crisis or when you're doing a, cri- doing a targeting a gang stalking crisis or emotional meltdown, you know, they'll laugh in your face and insinuate that you get what you deserve and defending and agreeing with the perps, with the regular perps in person, you know. And then when you you end up feeling betrayed when they do that, or, or that, you know, and, and come on, man, like they got mosquitoes like crazy tonight. So, um, so the moment you feel like, well, they just, I mean, they, they, I mean, you even try to confront them and wondering why they quit calling you every day. Like they used to call you and check up on you every day. Then they start to act like as if they're too busy for you or like they don't have time for you. You confront them and wonder, well, you know, I mean, if they go from calling you every single day, sometimes two or three times a day to check up on you. Then afterwards, they afterwards they um sit there and um you know go like 
between two weeks and a month to not talk to you and act like as if they're being, especially the fake religious ones, oh, they'll try to make like as if they're being busy for the Lord or trying to be about their father's business and, you know, trying to make like as if you're a nuisance to their, or, or like you're spiritually holding them back and hindering them or like as if you're too clingy and needy and dependent. Like clingy, needy, and dependent. And uh or and, and so they try to manipulate you into feeling addicted to the friendship. And then when they start to act weird and stuff. And there's a Kia, a black Kia Soul that I just pulled in over there. Yeah, see, see they got some weird activity going on. <clears throat> That's why I got the camera turned away from me. So they'll pretend to, um, you know, manipulate the friendship. And it'll be like, you know, and then you keep questioning or asking them about why they're acting weird or why they're changing or something like that. Or like, you know, why why they're not acting the way they used to. And they'll make it like as if you're a nuisance and a hindrance to their so-called walk with God. <clears throat> and then... They get keep gaslighting you in line and saying, "Oh, I'm just going through stuff. It, it's not you. I'm been very busy, or it's not you. That's the problem. I'm just. Oh, I'm a poor communicator, or oh, I'm. Just, it's not you. I just had needed. Some, I just, you know, needed some time for myself while I'm having some downtime. When you would do stuff like say, don't stop doing so many videos, or you do too many videos, or your videos are too long." Or, oh, you need to um, shut down your social media. It's not good for you. And then you gain some popularity on Twitter. <clears throat> Whoever got out of that kid's soul, now they're trying to talk loud to who? I don't know who. Let's see? See, they're doing that on purpose. YouTube, it ain't my fault with the fucking um, copyright claim. That's that Kia Soul. Get the hell away from here. So they're doing that on purpose to distract me from talking about talk, something very important. So, um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> after you realize that they took off their mask, their covert narcissist fake mask after they took off their covert narcissist fake mask and revealed who they are and then they threaten you and bully you and dare you to do a video exposing them as a fake ti perp and they try to bully and frighten and intimidate you <clears throat> and you end up keeping silent for a while. And even after they backstabbed and betrayed you and you, they hung up in your face and got mad and get punished you with the silent treatment and stuff, even after six months, you still be scared to say something. And then after a while, you you end up just breaking your silence. And people think you're being messy because they're like, oh, why why does she ain't say nothing when, when it happened? Or oh, why she got to wait six months to, to act like, I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, when they're scared to speak up against abuse and stuff, they end up, you know, being scared to say something, no matter what kind of abuse it is. And then eventually later on, I guess when they 
feel more comfortable, then I guess they end up breaking their silence and so and speaking out about it, you know, but sometimes it might happen right away, or even if you just wait a few days or something or after you have like a certain kind of realization about everything that's going on, and then the the fake t i perps what they'll do is they'll reverse it on you and lie and say that you're the that you're the government spy agent or think spy agent or you're the one who's the fake TI perp. And it's like, well, once you betrayed me and turned against me, you're the one who started gaining popularity. Like if you started gaining popular big time popularity on Twitter and growing your followers real quick. And everybody, you get lots of likes, retweets, and everything else. Um, but at first, when you were cool with me or pretended to be fake nice, it's like you kept a low profile and and wanted really no parts of social media and just wanted to stick with YouTube. But then you get on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and then you start to get popular and well liked. You know, and and then a narcissistic control freak fake friend, they'll do something like talk to you for like a whole two years. I'm sharing my short stories. They'll pretend to love bomb me and juice my head up to thinking that I got the best short stories that they ever heard and that they like all of them. But then they started to act, pretend to pull away from that and act like as if they dread or don't have time to read my short stories or they'll put put it put them on the back burner and never read them but at first and then they'll claim that oh I do short stories too or I'm a writer too but then you don't find out until after the friendship is over that they have another so-called secret talent like music or art that they never showed you and it's like well I never knew you did you know abstract art or I never knew you played a flute or I know I never knew that you that you write that you write novels, poetry, short stories, and all that too. You know, and I'm, and it's like as I said, you know, everything is one sided. But you know, they got this fake friend named Sarah Townsend that I used to see a couple of years ago, and she's like not tar- not a targeted individual, but I know her from, I know know her knew her for three years. And so, um, Sarah, you know, pretended to be a fake friend and when Sarah, you know, she would always ask me nosy questions and wanting to know all my business just so she can use that as a weapon against me and treat me like I'm slow when she's mentally off, slow and retarded her damn self. You know, and so, um, she's mentally off and slow her damn self, but she, you know, delusionally believes she's mature and delusionally, she, it's like, she thinks so, like, so, like, arrogant about herself that she act like she delusionally believes she's bigger, better, and higher than perfect and thinks she got a license to judge, sit back and judge and condemn. You know, and the other day, you know, she asked me about what happened with the cab driving job and, you know, she wanted to get deep in my business. And it's like, I'm just like, long story, it's a long story, it's a long story, you know. But I really think she was also smear campaigning me (coughs) to her friends. And she would act a certain kind of, do like Carnell. I knew Carnell since middle school. But Wyatt went to, um, Wyatt knew Carnell since, I guess, first, no, Carnell was in first grade and Wyatt must have been a little older. And then Carnell swooped into my life in 2018. And then... You know, it was right after I became home, not directly, but, you know, not all that long after I became homeless in New Orleans, you know, before I came to Pensacola. And he was, 
you, you know, Sarah did like Carnell by doing stuff like they can have lengthy con- and the biological gay brother Mark would do this too. Have lengthy con- phone conversations with friends and everybody else. But when it comes to me, they want to talk to me strictly via text message. And then, like, Cornell and Sarah, people like them text you. Some kind of way they <clears throat> drain the shit out of your phone battery. Like, a 10-minute text message conversation and drain your battery from 100 to, to nearly zero. It's like, why would Cornell do this to me if I'm on the doggone streets and I need my battery? <clears throat> like, pick up the phone and freaking talk to me. Like, other professed targeted, I mean, they're not TIs, but professed targeted individuals, if I'm talking on the phone, we can talk on the phone for three hours. And it wouldn't even drain my battery like that. You know, the most it might drain my battery is like 20 or 25%, maybe, for three hours or so. You know, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I mean, if they got a certain kind of secret way to be with you, like the biological gay brother, Mark, if he would do stuff like restrict the conversation, if he would see me in person, he would restrict the conversation <clears throat> to be um about computers, cars, driving, and jobs. And that's all he wanted to talk about. And he will always want to pry into my fi- my biological brother. He will always want to pry into my financial business. And so, and then when I had my laptop, he would be eager to want to use my laptop <clears throat> and then go on gay porn websites and then put all kinds of viruses on my computer and then go back and snoop through my web internet search history and then run back to the biological mom Francis and tell her everything I posted I mean tell you know tell her all all my internet activity <clears throat> and then <clears throat> afterwards <clears throat> you know she would come back and tell me well Mark said you did this Mark said you did that and I've been people don't act like they don't believe me when I tell them that I can be in a, in like a different city and state, or I or if, if I was living underneath Mark or Pete or something, they would come back home from work and tell me like, if you're busy and have a job and work, how can you come back and tell me everything I did in the house that day, and then. Like, I'm like wondering, like, do you have secret cameras in the house or something to know everything I did? Like, how the hell if you, how do you, how do you know what, and how can you come and tell me what I did every, all day, you know, <clears throat> or my own twin sister would, you know, I would be in Los Angeles and she's in freaking, you know, at the time living in Mississippi or, or Texas or something. And then. I'm at, in Los Angeles, and she act like she can try, try to freaking tell me what I did all day, or what I be doing all day. <clears throat> you know, and so it's like they all they felt threatened by my Illuminati New World Order research. And when I went by my twin sister in 2017, she tried to talk about I should stop researching Illuminati and the New World Order and the truth and everything, trying to talk about information overload. Come on, man. (laughs) So... I'm like, wow, somebody from the fake IDMR cult must have told her. Come on, man. I I figure somebody from the fake IDMR cult must have gave her the so-called intelligence to say something like that. You know, there's a lot to freaking learn about the doggone truth. And, and, um... 
you know, it's like hardly anybody spreading the truth nowadays. <clears throat> and then we go back to being desensitized and blinded, you know. We end up being desensitized and blinded and everything like that, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, now I wouldn't, nowadays I wouldn't even trust getting close with Sarah. I don't want her asking for my phone number. You know, I don't trust her with this new number. And I, and the few people that I did give them my number, it's like, damn, they really tricked me. Like one one of the ladies from um, Gulf Breeze High School, you know, <clears throat> recently saw me and asked me for my phone number and acted like she was so excited to see me and stuff. I gave her my phone number. I texted her a couple of things. I haven't heard shit. And I'm like, well, what if she was lying about being somebody from Gulf Breeze High School just to get my number and just to get me to let my guard down and trust her and her take my number and then go give it to the dog on fusion centers and make me feel like you can't trust no. But she manipulated me into thinking she was legit. I mean, it might have been really one of them, you know. And so the lady who gave me the other sleeping bag, she lied and said, well, oh, I've been work, working nonstop for 18 hours. That's the one who juiced my head up about the so-called, you know, said she was going to spread my fundraiser and um, stuff like that. And she was the one who gave me the the other sleeping bag, the, the 